Welcome back to episode 2 of the Youth Academy Career Mode here on FIFA 21. We are somehow mid-table with Barrow at this stage. We have a game against Grimsby today with, well, a tired side. And we're missing Alho with his uh, unfortunate international duty. But we have a strongish squad. Mm, but it's going to get weaker as we progress through because there are still some higher rated real life players that we need to at least replace in the starting lineup that at present we can't sell because we're not in a, uh, a window at present. So we've three games to be played today. Grimsby to start, then Bradford, then Exeter, Port Vale and Scunthorpe. And I'll probably play the last three and sim the first two so we can race through these first couple of games and fingers crossed get some decent performances and all results it's a 2-0 defeat to Grimsby though the majority of this first season is going to be very very tough and I'm not expecting to be anywhere above 15th 16th at best I have had that one scout come back now the one that was previously out looking for goalkeepers I'm going to send him out again any of these guys 16 yet? No, the goalkeeper obviously we're leaving there for the time being. Uh, I'm going to send this Finnish scout back out. He's going to go back to Scotland and this time for three months he's going to look for attackers. And hopefully, hopefully by the time he comes back next month we will be able to then have a full starting 11 that is all regens. Because we're, we're getting close to it now. we Bradford here midweek. Josh Lillis wants to play, but unfortunately, sir, we already have uh, two goalkeepers that are not better than you, but are regens, so we'll be playing. Uh, I'll take Metcalf out because he is super tired and we'll throw Goodwin in. Hopefully, hopefully we can get something from this game against Bradford. They're 15th and not having the best of seasons. We are 19th, as you can see here. The board only wants us to not finish in the bottom two, basically. So as things stand, we're doing exactly what the board want from us. Donahue with a goal, Ball with another as well, a 2-2 draw against Bradford. We've got ourselves another point for the cause. That's fantastic. We're picking up more points here than we did when we attempted this on stream. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the way that this is going. This is actually going better than I thought it would do, better than I anticipated we'd be performing at this stage, although there are still some first team players that we need to get out of the starting lineup and we will definitely get weaker between now and the end of the season so we have extra away who are currently top of the table it's not necessarily the best of oppositions for the first played game of the day <clears throat> especially with the state of the side stamina is going to be an issue but we can throw Metcalf back in uh, we got any other regens down here just Angus unfortunately so uh, obviously I want to play regens but at the same time I don't want them to get injured because they're tired. So I'm going to go and rotate a couple of players out of this starting eleven, And I will see you in the game against Exeter. Of course, as ever, though, do drop the video a like if you're enjoying this save. And let me know your feedback continually in the comment section down below. I won't record any more from here until I've seen your feedback on episodes 1 and 2. Uh, obviously, to ensure that I can keep up with daily uploads. The series started Saturday and I've recorded this one before you've seen episode 1. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Speaking of episodes 1s, there was another episode 1 yesterday that went up on the channel, which was a football manager video. Now, that will be the only one that goes live on this channel. But all future Football Manager series videos from that series will go live on the second channel, which is linked below. Of course, you can watch those, uh, that, watch that save live over on Twitch as well on the link in the description down below. So go and do that as well. Right, that said, now I'll see you in the game against Exeter. Callum Gribbin is getting the start at striker alongside Anjoli as Salem was very tired, as you guys saw. Find Anjoli here. I've got support. And Dennis... Couldn't have hit that worse. Well, there's the first chance of the game. We're building nicely, just not necessarily executing the shots as well as we could do. X to have the best defensive record in the league, which is unsurprising considering they are top of the table. So we are going to be up against it today in this first game. But we will give our damnedest to get something out of it. We came very close to a win yesterday in our played game. Very close indeed against Harrogate Town. Was gutting not to win it. But we have had a win so far this season. So the side are showing some promise. Even in these early stages. Even with these lower rated players. So there is still the chance. Ah, he's offside. That we could be a surprise package this year. Let's pull back to Collins. 
And over the top is an excellent ball into Matt J. He's got options here. Davies gets a foot in. Stood up to the middle. Atangana. Well, he hit it well enough, but Stoddart saved. Good hands, my man. Good hands indeed. We keep Exeter out for now. Keeping our clean sheet just as they keep theirs. Jay involved heavily in that previous move and looking to work some space. Not necessarily from the training ground, I don't think, that move. But it could end up in a goal-scoring opportunity still. Bowman to Atangana. Oh, it's opened up for him here, but Platt will get rid of it. That was close. Exeter getting more and more dangerous as the game progresses. And Jolie out down the line to Metcalf. Space to get across in. And delivery has and deliver well. And get to the second ball, he will too. And Dennis has had one chance in this half and has scooped and spooned his second as well. Don't think I'll be shooting with him too often from now on. I'll definitely be looking for the extra pass, I think. Nil-nil at the break. Forward to Bramall. Into Andrews. Come off the bench here for us as Anjoli was well, pretty, uh, pretty past it, to be honest, with regards to his ability to have any sort of say in the outcome of this game. Andrew trying to bully his way through, but not quite able to do it. I've also brought on Jones in midfield as well for Dennis, who, despite having a couple of chances, certainly had uh, one of his legs falling off as well as the other striker. Jamie Vardy confirmed as going to Barcelona in this first transfer window. I certainly wasn't expecting that. I didn't show you yesterday the, uh, the moves in this window or in this season so far, but I didn't really feel like they were necessary. Uh, if you would like to see, in the next episode or two, the transfers that have been made to this point in the save, in general, then do let me know and I'll I'll show you the uh, the page. Oh, just trying to poke that round the corner looking for Bramall. And he's put so much behind it, though, that it's gone out for a goal kick. Half an hour to go here. Still nil-nil, fighting tooth and nail for everything we can get. Free kick for Exeter. Jay will deliver and deliver well. A mixture of two men underneath it, but we do clear it from danger, at least for now. Jay will take the corner as well as that free kick. Keeper thought about coming for it, didn't. Platt's gotten up to that. I'm not going to try and take control there, because I didn't want to stick a toe in and accidentally foul him and give away a penalty. Bowman, or good save by Stoddart, reacted well at the near post, which is something that his predecessor didn't do in the game against Harrogate. Oh, they've hit the post, and we will get it away. Calm and composed at the back when needed. Alho on the counter. We'll look over the top for Metcalf. And the winger could be in here. Waiting for support. Waiting for support. Here it is. Andrew played round the corner. Good save by Anderson at the back for Exeter. Both keepers called into action at both ends. And the woodwork for us as well. But still no goals here in this game against Exeter. We are holding our own and perhaps could have found ourselves 1-0 up there. And Jay again. Let's not lose it late on. Let's not concede late on like we did against Harrogate, please. Jay. Good save, Stoddart. <sighs> Under pressure. X to want this win. They want to stay top of the table. But we're determined to keep a clean sheet here. Parks on for Caprice for them. Away by Thomas, but only back out for another corner. I'm getting itchy feet now. I don't like this. Jay short to Randall. They shook me off. Cross comes in, but it's... Well, it has found a teammate, but not the best of crosses. And still up, we'll hold on to that. And take your time, pal. Take your time. We want this win. We're not going to take any risks. We're just going to play it slow. We want this win. We want this point. We don't want to give Exeter their win. Just take our time. And you never know. You might end up having the chance to win it yourself at the other end. It's Mike Jones. It's... Not going to be a goal. <laughs> so he keeps it against the men that fell over in front of him. That's annoying. Never mind. A nil-nil draw is good enough for me against table-topping Exeter City. We will take it. Up next was Port Vale, I think. We should be back to full strength. It's weird that full strength is weaker than our normal, or than our lineup today. But back to our regular first team eleven is what I'll say. That's how we'll phrase it. Good point, Matt. This is it then. Port Vale. The chance to get ourselves some more points for our League 2 campaign. We're not really expecting promotion for at least two seasons, I would have said. Salem, though, oh, could have given us a dream start here at home against Port Vale. We are 
seeing growth already from this squad. Dennis is up to a lofty 46. Bull is up to 69. And Stoddart is 50 already. So, and Alho is up to 67 from 66. We are seeing some growth already from these regents, which is brilliant. They need to grow, so it's also a relief. But at the same time, it, clearly we're doing well enough to be able to get some growth out of these guys. And a couple of them have really genuinely decent potentials if they get the amount of first-team football that we should be able to offer them over the first couple of seasons. This is going to be a real test for dynamic potential because as you've seen from previous series over the past well, FIFA and a half, I guess, with 20 and 21, that dynamic potential can really have a massive impact on some low-rated players. We've seen players go from early 70s to early 90s, even when they don't have the potential to do so. Like in the lead save last year with players like Tyler Roberts. Oh, keep that in and ball will deliver. Oh, it's not the best of balls. And Jolie's brought it down well, though. Yikes, but he can't get a shot off. And we saw Federico Insua fly in the last save at Mallorca. Admittedly, he did have the potential to be special, but it still didn't take long for him to get absolutely world class. And he's on his own there. Rooney can't, either can't get to it or has balls it up. And then Warren on the far side does the same. They will not have a better chance there, I don't think. Port Vale, he really should do better with that, especially with such a low rated goalkeeper in goal. They'll rue that miss if we end up getting a goal or two in this first half. But you can see how the defensive positioning of my centre-backs there, not necessarily the best, as the, the, the striker, Rooney, was quite clearly all on his own in the middle of the box there, but also all on his own in the middle of the box. Isn't Jolie here? And we have a lead! You will rue that miss, Port Vale! From one end to the other, 1-0 Barrow! The boys are in front! Let's go! into Taylor. There's only a minute to go here in this first half. Port Vale are on the attack and it could lead to something. There is in. They've scored. He's offside. Oh, it was very tight. I try and notice and you can see me try and step there, but I, I thought I'd actually backed off a little bit too far. That is probably the tightest offside call I've seen in a career mode ever. Because I, I, you could see me react and step, but I thought I'd I stepped, but then tried to backtrack to... Because I think I thought I'd not done it right. I'd not timed it right. I did time it right, but by about that much. Jeez Louise, that was close. And that would have been 1-1 as well. But we have our lead at halftime. We'll look to build on it in the second half. Port Vale try and get themselves back into it at the beginning of this second half. They've built nicely there. Rodney played in and Worrell gets it back again. Had probably their best chance. In that first half or that left footed shot that just drifted past the post. Although Rodney in the middle certainly should have gotten on the end of the original cross that led to that chance. We've been pretty solid so far. I have to, I have to be honest, I really didn't expect this first season to go as well as it has so far. We're not exactly setting the world alight. But equally we're not getting burned every single week. And that's unexpected after the way that things went with the stream version of this. If I could just get to that, I tell you, oh, hiss, ha, oh, how, oh my God. <laughs> what? That's a ridiculous, he's not even, that's not even on his way to the ball. He's just falling over with his arm out. How the hell has he saved that? That should be two nil. I can't believe they've kept that out. I, I, don't, I can't believe he's not locked onto the ball there either. How on earth are we not 2-0 up here? They've had no shots on target yet, Port Vale. They've obviously had chances, as you've seen in the game, but none of them causing the goalkeeper much concern. Salem waiting for the run on the outside. Metcalf into the middle. It might fall for me. It just won't. I can't believe I'm not 2-0 in front. I cannot believe I'm not 2-0 in front in this game. Still Barrow 1, Port Vale 0. We still have our lead, but oh, if we don't get the win now, I can't look beyond that individual chance being the reason for it. But if I do this, we should have a man free. Oh, and I just need to make sure I do it right. Metcalf, no! Brown is determined not to concede another. It's a great save. I'll whip it to the edge of the six-yard box. Oh, and I can't quite get there. It's going to fall to Dennis. I've learned not to shoot with him. Salem does have a decent shot in the back locker. 
Cross it in. Oh, there's not enough on it. Oh, they're getting risky at the back though, Port Vale. A second goal is coming. But rather typically, it will probably be them on the counter-attack as we've had them pinned in all bloody game. Certainly in this second half. 20 to go here. Worrell down the right for Port Vale. Everything they've done, or the majority of their football has come through Worrell on this right-hand side of their attack. Rodney trying to get that into the middle early. Tucked right in from right back, to be fair, but needed to be. That's fallen free to Dennis. And Alho will look out wide right here to Metcalf. And there's really not long to go now. We might not have been able to... Ah, we might not have been able to find that second goal, but hopefully we're not going to need it. There's not long left to go at all. Making changes. Dennis is coming off in the midfield for Goodwin. And he'll come off the bench and... But basically, I <laughs> made the change to try and waste some time, to be completely honest, to ensure that we get the victory here. But McCurdy is in a dangerous position. The shot comes in, but Stoddart makes the save. And again, we'll just waste time. He's like, chill, chill, calm down. The whistle has gone. And that will be victory for Barrow against Port Vale. Our first win in a played game. Absolutely delighted with how this is going so far. Those of you that saw the stream version of this know that we were nowhere near this we were rock bottom for weeks weeks with no chance we were basically south end and scunthorpe more like south end to be completely honest who were one of the teams up for the vote to uh, be used for this youth academy save but two wins and only two defeats only two defeats so far that's remarkable can't believe it six draws unreal this side are actually still fighting tooth and nail for everything. Absolutely everything. Although there is going to be the opportunity, of course, for more negative results to come once we replace the remainder of the real-life players that are in the starting lineup currently. But the way things are going so far, I honestly, genuinely could not be happier. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it too. And this journey has certainly started at a better pace than I expected it to. Out wide, but picked off by O'Malley. You saw the league table a moment ago and Scunthorpe are second bottom without a win so far this season. Actually, we have Scunthorpe now and the first game of next month is Southend, who are bottom without a win so far this season. It would be absolutely typical of my content and me as a FIFA player to lose this and the next game and give both Scunthorpe and Southend their first wins of the season in the games against me. But I'll try my damnedest to uh, get something here against Scunthorpe. Oh, but we are going to go 1-0 down early doors. You can just feel it coming. Oh. Right, Scunthorpe 1, Barrow 0. Not the start we were after away from home, but that was a good header at the near post. He's got the height on the defender. He's risen well against two and flicked it on beautifully. Not too dissimilar from Marquinhos's header for PSG midweek. Good header that. And Scunthorpe have themselves, so far in the opening nine minutes, a deserved lead. Loft through to Hallam. Scunthorpe actually looked pretty damn dangerous so far in this game. Already got themselves the one. And look, the more likely to get the next goal. And they may do. They have done. Gilead gives it into the back of the net with his left foot. And Scunthorpe. It's just typical, isn't it? This is so typical. Scunthorpe without a win in the first, what, 11 games? And then they're like, ha ah, ha, no, we're going to beat you, mate. Brilliant. 2-0 Scunthorpe after 18 minutes. This is more like what I expected this season. Excellent footwork from him. Into Alho. And Anjoli. It's been a good source of goals for us so far. Hoping Salem can chip in with one or hopefully two if possible today as well. Anjoli with the spin. Anjoli with the shot. Watson with the save. Well worked. Had enough to get away from the defender there. That's a decent delivery too. I was trying to give the defender a bit of a push so I could get a better angle for a header, but wasn't able to challenge for it and win it. And now it's 3v2 at the back here. And we're on the back foot. Thankfully, they've misplaced their, misplaced their pass. Oh, dear me. Erdley. He's on the move there, Metcalf, down the right. If I can find Salem, oh, we could have had a chance to pull one back, but we've wasted it. Turan over the top. Easily, ooh, easily enough. I was going to say down by Erdley, but certainly made a meal of it. We nearly lost it again. And Jody, keep that run going, Salem. Keep that run going, my friend. Good position back here. And Alho 
Drop the shoulder, beat the man, run out of space. Oh no, Dennis! Oh, why did I shoot with Dennis? I know not to shoot with Dennis. <laughs> Balls, I shot with Dennis. We've had all of the ball at 64% possession, but Scunthorpe with the two goals. They are clinical so far, which is evidently, by the league table, something they've whoa, not been all season. And that very nearly ended up in the back of the net for a third. Loft across to Hallam. Space on his right-hand side for Gilead. And he's going to find Donald Turan. And Scunthorpe really are putting us to bed here. 3-0 in this first half. They look like the side that should be top of the table. They're playing just as well as Exeter did, if not better. How they've only got six points so far this season or wherever it was. I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. They are hands down the most difficult side we've played against so far this season. But such is the way of things in the lower leagues. Anybody can beat anybody. And on this occasion, Scunthorpe certainly look like they're going to be beating us. Can I get one back before half time? No. His loft. If they can score three and a half, we can score three and a half. But equally, <laughs> they could just score three more. Oh, imagine if we lose this 6 0. Jesus Christ, that would be embarrassing. Hallam into loft. Looking for Iser out wide, and somehow he squeezed that over the near post. I don't know why you're complaining at your defenders in front of you, Keeps. There was that much room for him to put that through. And he squeezed it through there. What a finish by Iser. It's 4-0 Scunthorpe. We've had a result of all kinds in this, oh, in this episode so far. Really hard for fantastic draw against Exeter. A good victory. And now we're taking an absolute pasting against a relegation candidate. And they definitely are relegation fodder in this save so far, Scunthorpe. Certainly, they've not been anywhere near as good as they have the potential to be this season. But this game is certainly showing the potential that their side has. Is this going to spark their season into life? Is this going to knock our season into a downward spiral? As, of course, after this game... We'll be adding more lower rated players to the squad with those monthly scout reports that are due to return before the next game. It's not exactly what we needed at this stage. A knock to the confidence like this. Salem into Anjoli. Oh, look for Salem again. He's found well. He's scored well. It's not going to happen, is it? Let's not get carried away. It's not going to happen. It could. It won't. It won't. It won't. It might. Nice tackle by Allo. Spence picks up the loose ball, though. If we're to do the unthinkable here, we have to get that second goal sharpish. But we could. We really could. Oh, if Anjoli could actually pass a football. Such is the problem with the nature of this new series. Unfortunately, when you need that clinical ball at the right time... <laughs> More often than not, you're not going to get it. Nice block on the defender by Green there. He's grown by two so far this season, although obviously that factors in his position change from right back. Now, Bull, I'll look for Anjoli. He's found well, but he can't shake off. The defender was in front of him, took his touch, and then found himself behind him. Oh, God, even the giant defenders at the back are struggling aerially as well. 15 to go here, still 4-1. We might be able to lessen the deficit with perhaps another goal or two, but to be able to absolutely bring it back round definitively is not going to happen. Allo. Forward to Dennis. Looking for the ball out wide. That's excellent from Dennis. And Bull is in. It's 4-2. We couldn't, could we? We couldn't, could we? Two to go. Ten minutes to find them. Bull doesn't score many for me in open play. Or in these played games. But he has been burying the ball more often than not in simulated games. Which is important. This formation isn't one to get the best out of him. But at the moment, I'm kind of wanting to stifle his growth almost a little bit. To ensure that he doesn't outgrow the side. Because if he flies and we get everything out of him, he'll be gone. Before we have the chance to, uh, to get the best out of him. And I want to keep him for the whole save if we possibly can. So... I'm happy, delighted that he's got the goal and really pleased that he's playing well and scoring well in simulated games. But I don't want him to fly up to the 
early to mid 70s by the end of season one and then be demanding a move because that's just not going to help us long term. He can do his bit. He can play well and hopefully he'll be heavily involved whilst not drastically changing his overall. He has grown one to 69 so far. He could get inside here and find a teammate and we could maybe find a third if the ball had found its way through and that really would have set up a gung-ho final two or three minutes but there's only two minutes added on now we're definitely going to lose we thought we were even at three nil and the fourth pretty much finished us off we had a brief fight back and i'm pleased to that we have shown some fighting spirit in this second half to get it back to four two that gives me confidence that we can come back in some scenarios where we perhaps aren't quite so far behind but scunthorpe do get a deserved win and their first win of the league season, remarkably, after the way that they played in that game. We will stay relatively mid-table. Southend get another draw. And we should have, between now and that game against Southend, we should have another uh, round of scout reports. Might be after the game against Southend. I can simulate it, though, so that we get that monthly scout report in today's episode. Youth Squad monthly report has come in for those that are already here and still waiting for uh, for those guys to turn 16 so we can call them up to the starting lineup. Adrian Segura is six foot one. He's probably more suited to being a centre back, really, with that lack of pace. Oh, those passings, one of his best stats. So, I don't know. I'm not sure. Jenkins looks half decent, but again, probably more suited to being a centre-back than a, than a full-back. I think full-backs might be an area where we struggle to find regens from our youth system that work that well. We might have to rely on free agents in those areas. But obviously, at this particular moment in time, we're going to concentrate on those uh, youngsters coming in. We've got some monthly reports. Youth scout report available. This is the third month for uh, two of those three, of course. So this is the final month. Charles Kenny is going to come in. He's 17 rated and... Ooh, 79 to 94 for Rodri Pumphrey. Three million? Oh, a one-star, one-star scout has found a worldy. Valued at three million. Rodri. Rodri. Wow. That's what it's all about. Whoa! Welcome to the club, Rodri Pumphrey. Up oh, you come to the first team and into the 11 as well. Kelly's a cam who uh, looks pretty rough, but because he's old enough, we'll call him up. And then Press, the left back, 49 rated, 17 years of age. So we will call him up and we'll get him into the starting lineup because that's how we work things. But thankfully, we have a replacement for Dennis now. So, Dennis is out of the starting lineup. And wow, Rodri Pumphrey. What a player he could prove to be. We'll change him to a centre mid if we can. Because he and Allo are both currently CDMs. So, we'll get that done sooner rather than later. And then at left back, Donahue can come onto the bench. And Thomas will drop out entirely. And Press can come in. So, we are getting worse in one area. But I certainly didn't expect with a one-star, one-star scout to find... Whoa! An absolute baller like Pumphrey. That's fantastic. He comes in and is our second highest rated player. Right off the bat. Third highest rated player. Ball's up to 70 now. Slow down, please, Lucas. Slow down. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, please. Right, those uh, two scouts can uh, be sent out elsewhere now. But, but I'm going to fire them both. And I'm going to hire... Two more that are that are of better ability. Oh, I only have enough for one worldie. Do I go for a worldie or do we work ourselves up slowly? Let's do that. Let's work ourselves up slowly. Should be another one that we can afford here that's about the same. I don't want to spend all of my budget now on that experience, judgment. Let's do that. Okay, so you guys need to let me know what sort of player to search for with Ellis Fry and Nino Filipovic. I'm probably still going to stay domestic, so I'll sell in this Ellis Fry to England, and I'll, sell, I'll send Nino to Ireland, and you guys need to let me know what sort of player to look for. What sort of player? So that is... Out, oh, hang on. Let me just set this to England, and then we can go. So I'm, I'm looking for technically gifted, or winger, or physically strong, playmaker, goalkeeper, attacker, or defence-minded. 
leaning towards playmaker actually because that could lead towards some uh, some really talented technical players but pumphrey welcome to the gang my man that's dreamy i certainly didn't expect to have someone that could has potential to be special has potential to be special unreal 106 weeks give me a break give me a break maybe then we t oh no maybe we change the formation to fit pumphrey in let me drop green a little bit and i should be able to put pumphrey into a cdm role in fact rather than doing that let me change to the 442 that has the two CDMs. Pumphrey and Alho will sit there. I will move Alho further forward when he becomes a centre mid. And I, I'll probably set Pumphrey to change to centre mid. But it's going to take two full seasons. But by the time he's done that, hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to, we'll be in a position to actually improve him in, in centre mid. We'll be playing a formation that actually suits the centre mid. Oh, I can't believe it. That's phenomenal. What an episode for number two. I absolutely did not expect to find someone that good this early. Unbelievable. That's fantastic. I can't wait to see how he grows. Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed, boys. Let me know your feedback in the comment section down below. Like I say, I won't record any more until you guys have seen episodes one and two. Because I need to know where to send those. No, not where to send them. Who to send them out looking for. But... My God, I do need another striker because we still only have Angelo. Though we are looking for attackers with uh, one of the scouts in Scotland. I could probably do, well, I definitely need wing backs as well. So I need a striker and I need full backs and probably some more centre mids. Probably some more centre mids. I've got Dennis and Goodwin. They're not very good, but oh, unbelievable. Pumphrey, welcome in, my friend. Let's go! I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, this save just gets better and better already.